So the FizzBuzz interview question is a very common interview question. And it's really a, a favorite interview question because of a few reasons. First, there's many possible approaches. Every programmer should know how to write this program. It's, it should be, it's considered an easy interview question. QuizBuds also helps you see the programming style of the candidate. You know, are you, do you use a more clever approach versus a brute force approach? You know, do you really understand how to program? Also, of course, during a programming interview, you might be coding on the spot in front of people, so they want to see how do you work under pressure. And you care about clean code and using good practices. So let's take a look at the FizzBuzz question. So the FizzBuzz interview question asks the following. Write a program that prints the numbers from 0 to 100 to the screen with the following conditions. So if the number is a multiple of 3, here, number 3, you print buzz, or sorry, you print fizz instead of the number. For multiples of 5, you print buzz instead of the number. And if you're a multiple of 3 and 5, you output fizz buzz. So it's a fairly simple question, but you'll see that there are several different ways we could approach this. Here's what I call the brute force approach. So in this case, notice that we write a for loop. So here we're looking at for all numbers or for each number between 0 and 100, notice what we're going to do. If we are a multiple of, or in this case, if we are not multiples of 3 and 5, then we just output the num. And then here we're checking if we are just a multiple of 3, then we output fizz. And then if we're a multiple of 5, output buzz. And then else, we must be a multiple of 3 and 5. And then we output this buzz. So this program does get the job done. But notice that there's a lot of code here. And if we needed to add more conditions, this code might get pretty ugly pretty fast. Checking every possible case in this way could become tedious. So the program is a correct way, but it requires a lot of code. And if somebody asked you to also output bang when you have a multiple of 7, you would have to go back and modify every single one of these if conditions in order to correctly change every possible case. So I call this a brute force approach because you're forcing yourself to check every possible case. You're not taking any clever shortcuts. But what if we instead try a clever approach? The clever approach utilizes if statements by utilizing if statements we can write cleaner 
more efficient coat. And more scalable code too, you'll see. So in the clever approach, we begin our for loop like before, and then notice what we do here. If we are not multiples of three or five, Notice, again, we're using modulus here to check for multiples. So if i divided by 5 doesn't have a remainder, then we know that we can check for multiples. Though so here, if we're not a multiple of 3 or 5, then we output the number. Notice if we're a multiple of 3, output fizz. And if we're a multiple of five, output buzz. Well, wait a minute. How do we check whether we're a multiple of three and five? Well, if we are a multiple of three and five, both if statements will trigger. So notice that this is actually a much more efficient way to write the program because there's a lot less code. And notice fizz buzz will happen automatically if the fizz and the buzz if statements trigger. So this is what's called the clever approach. And I recommend that you really practice and understand this clever approach, because if you were doing a coding interview, this is most likely the approach that would land you the job. This approach shows that you understand if statements and that you understand how to write very clean code. So once again, the clever approach is a more elegant solution. It shows that you really understand how if statements work. And it's much easier to add more conditions. All right, so quick, let's briefly share more hint related to FizzBuzz and related to a question that I like to give on homework assignments. Suppose you want to write a program which outputs the numbers 0 through 100, separated by a new line with the following conditions. If the number is a multiple of 2, you output Abra to the screen. If the number is a multiple of 3, you output Cadabra instead of the number. If the number is a multiple of 4, you output Alakazam to the screen. Notice if the number is not a multiple of 2, 3, or 4. You just output the number with no additional text. If we're in multiple of both 2 and 3, the output should be abracadabra. But if the conditions for alakazam are met, only alakazam should be outputted, and nothing else should trigger. So the approach here is similar to FizzBuzz. Notice we can use modulus 2, modulus 3, and modulus 4 to check for multiples of 2, 3, or 4. So if you use if statements, you can check for each multiple. A tricky question here is this last condition. How do we make sure that 
if Alakazam happens, nothing else triggers. Here's a hint. What about an if else statement? Remember, in an if statement, remember, in an if statement, the statement protected by the if will only run if the if statement is true. So, one approach to write this program is to first, you know, start your for loop. And inside your for loop, you can check. if we have a multiple of four. If the conditions for alakazam are met, only alakazam should trigger. So if we're a number multiple of four, we output alakazam, right? And then we put everything else separate. So notice, if we use an approach like this, if alakazam triggers, nothing else will happen. For that number. Otherwise, we can output the other conditions. So keep this in mind. Notice how cleverly designed if and else statements can make programs a lot easier to write and to modify.